Okay, coming back to meditation posture. Settling the body and mind once again, using that physical awareness to ground yourself. Releasing any tension. Settling and stabilizing. and reviving your motivation. All sentient beings who although self and all appearances are Dharma Datu by nature have not realized it thus. I shall endow with happiness and the causes of happiness. I shall separate from suffering and the causes of suffering. I shall make inseparable from happiness without suffering. And I shall set in equanimity the cause of well being, free from attachment, aversion, and partiality. And shifting your focus to the breath. Just relax into the simplicity of it. At ease with watching it. Our simple breath.
If the distractions are important and intriguing, you can return to them some other time. But just keep that gentle discipline of returning and returning and returning to the breath. And now shift your mind from single pointedness very intentionally to analysis. And start by once again, recognizing the object to be negated or refuted. See if you can find that sense of inherently existent self. Provoke it back into prominence using imagination and memory in the style of your choice, get it to show itself.
thinking of that self, that me that arises so strongly when affirmed and validated or criticized and threatened. That one so ready to either agree or disagree with the projections of others. That one that sets up a target to be hit. That creates a moat of protection. that believes in the facade it's created. And even though you know there is no inherently existent self, don't tell the inherently existent self that just yet. Allow it to believe in itself for a moment. And ascertain that its existence is in one of two ways. It's either one with or different from the aggregates. So not yet challenging its existence, just challenging the way it exists, if it actually does. saying to that self, if you are who you say you are, your relationship with the parts is either to be the same as them or different from them. Those are the only two possible relationships if you exist in the way that you say you do. This I is the body and mind, or this I is something different than the body and mind. If this I is inherent, that's how it is, one of those ways. And so we have to see the way in which the self, the inherently existent self, is it the same as the aggregates? Is it one with them? I is the aggregates. Does that make sense? I is the body. I is the main mind, the mental factors. multiple continuums of selves all smashed together, living here in this space we occupy, 
Does that work? Can it be? If I was the aggregates, because the aggregates are more than one, then the I would be more than one. A feeling I, a discrimination I, body I, mind I, all with their own storyline, possibly unrelated to one another. Maybe one could go rogue and have its own story. And so allow your logic to collapse that impression. The I can't be the same as the aggregates. Because self is one and aggregates are many. One can't be many simultaneously. And so then shift and think, maybe the I is fundamentally different to the aggregates, separate from them. Because the self is one and the aggregates are many, then the self has to be an addition. Like a puppeteer moving the arms and legs telling the puppet what expressions to have, how to behave. The I is like then the boss, maybe in the center of our body, sitting in our heart chakra, controlling the movements and ideas telling the aggregates what to do. So if that were true, it should be findable. Is there anything that feels like it is myself, it is my I, that is not also an experience of one of the aggregates? Is there any experience you're having that you can say that is an I experience, a self experience on its own autonomously, independently from aggregate experiences? And you come to find that anything that feels like an autonomous self-experience is actually a related dependent experience based on what's happening with the aggregates. So an inherent self simply isn't possible because it cannot be found one with or separate from. It cannot be found as same or different. So therefore it cannot be. Conclude that there is then no inherent self. See if you can find 
that non-finding. And so because there is no inherently existent self, there can only be an imputedly existent self, merely labeled by the mind on the collection of parts. And so dedicate Jantu Sam Charim Boshe Ma ke panam ke gyuachi ke panyam bhame bhai kone gondu pelwasho toni dawarim boshe ma ke panam ke gyuachi ke panyam bhame bhai kone gondu pelwasho and relaxing your attention. Okay, have a nice dinner. See you soon.